Welcome to the Higher Self Podcast. The purpose of this podcast is to help you unravel anything keeping you from a life of true abundance, joy, and happiness, which is your birthright. Each week, we'll bring in different guests specifically tailored to help you on your journey to discovering your higher self, whether it's spirituality, business, finances, health, or relationships, there are no topics that are off limits. So get ready and enjoy this week's episode of The Higher Self. Welcome to this week's episode of The Higher Self. Okay, just listen to these words. It's fucking spiritual. So there, we said a bad word. And if your mind and your ego is maybe calling it a sin or saying that it's evil, I think we get to talk about that today because this week's episode is the host of a wonderful podcast called It's Fucking Spiritual. That's the second bad word now. Rachel Gibbler. Rachel, how are you? I'm so good. Thank you so much for having me, Danny. How are you? I'm good. I'm excited about this conversation. Thank you. Me yeah. as well. It's. I never know how people are going to take it when they hear the the name of my podcast. And that was kind of the point. Well, you know, so talk to me about that because, you know, we live in a world where it's so interesting, you know, um, in, 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 in our space, we're constantly posting content on TikTok and, and social media. And one of the things that I like to talk about is the fact that, you know, there's nothing wrong. The content is just the content, right? Yeah. But sometimes the content is a mirror for something that is either unhealed in you as something that needs to be brought up inside of you. Right. And so for people like they get all riled up. Yeah. So I like it. I, I'm you. totally cool with it. What was your thinking behind it? So I love the idea of polarization. Okay. And I think to explain how the podcast came to be, it's important to explain how I got here. Let's do that. And, you know, I come from a background of, I was atheist for my whole life growing up. And that was, I, I very much felt judged by anything religious and that was my own stuff right that was totally my own stuff that i've worked through now at this point but i was very um i was kind of out there and i was edgy and i always felt like i had to be a good girl and that never was really who i was inside and i was raised by a family um beautiful parents that were amazing but always wanted me to look a certain way, act a certain way, be very proper, be very, you know, the good girl archetype, right? right? And all of that came crashing down when I was 16 years old. My father was killed in a freak accident. And that led me down an eight year spiral of being the not good girl and swinging in the opposite direction. And that was eight years of drug and alcohol abuse and abusive relationships and just really feeling so much shame for myself. And I got to this place where I myself was in an accident and it forced me to wake up to, I don't wanna do this in my life anymore. Mm. And as I woke up to self-development and mindset and I laid in bed for three months with a cast from my hip to my ankle and just studied successful entrepreneurs. I was in a corporate job at the time that was absolutely to toxic and sucking the life out of me. And I got to this place of, okay, I'm going to change my life. And as I went down that path of self-development and of spirituality, I took five years and just dove into it. And about a year and a half ago, right before I launched the podcast, I knew I wanted to share my story. I knew I had changed my life. And at this point, I had built a couple companies and I was like, I'm, I'm ready to share my story. But what I didn't see in these communities, in the spiritual and self-development spaces, were a place where you could just show up messy and human and raw and honest. And it was almost as if you had to fit in a box. Mm. And I'm loving this yeah, already. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so that is the very fast version of that story. But ultimately, I was looking for a place in the spiritual community where I could show up as like, I'm like, I'm human and I curse and I'm not perfect. And yet these principles have changed my life. And I wanted to bring 
self-development and spiritual principles to people who felt alienated from the typical jargon or the very esoteric way of being. Yeah. I was like, you know what? One day I just said, it's fucking spiritual. You know, sometimes it's just fucking spiritual. We don't have to right. look a certain way or, right. or act a certain way right. in order to, to have these uh, principles work for us. And so I launched that and it took off. And I believe it was because, a few reasons, but the main one being people, so many people were looking for a space that wasn't this like, I meditate and everything's perfect and love and light. I don't preach love and light. Yeah. I'm the exact opposite of that. And yet oh, it's still fucking spiritual. I love that so much. And so that's how it came to be. I love that so much. I love that for so many reasons. Number one, you know, it's interesting. Um, I, I went through this, mm. you know, so I'm I'm calling myself out here. But I went through this phase when, you know, I, I started my spiritual journey. It's like, you know, you don't realize it, but you're still very much in your ego. Yes. Because it's like you are now like, okay, so like I came from a very religious background. Mm. I, I was a Christian, right? And um, and so when you leave that, all of a sudden, like you're now like you have now arrived. Yeah. You know? And it was interesting, but like I did what like, you know, the the spiritual community sometimes does. It's like you go through this phase of like, you know, you wear the hat, mm. right? And then you wear the the clothes from the different material and yeah. you know, it's like all like like Lucy and stuff. And like I did the whole thing. Yeah. And then finally I was like, what the fuck am I doing? And like this, I, I feel dumb. Like, yeah. This isn't me. You know, it could be somebody else, but it it's not me, you know. And then I finally got to a space where the second thing that happened to me was even in, like as I looked out and I looked at all like spiritual teachers, mm -hmm. what I really noticed and that I, I would love to talk to you about is that there was this disconnect in the spiritual community. And for all of you listeners, you gotta, I, I want you to grab this. It's like spiritual people were highly disconnected from their ability to call it be in their masculine or be driven or make money, mm. you know? And then like, in the business world that I served, the business people were highly disconnected from their heart, yeah. right? Yeah. And so when I looked out, it was like, even in the spiritual world, it's like, there was a lot of spiritual people, but like either people didn't make money, right? Or they made a lot of money and they weren't connected to their heart. Or if you wanted to be a spiritual teacher, you had to look a certain way, yes, right? And you had to like dress a certain way. And I started to finally see this, even within myself, it's like, that's still ego and it's still separation, you know? What are your thoughts? Absolutely. I think that that was what this was born out of was this idea that when I was going through my transformation and, and granted we're always transforming and, and growing, but when I was looking for my place, I think often, especially when we know that we have our own story to share and I was in masterminds and going to events and and doing a lot of things immersed immersing myself in the culture and feeling that i had to look a certain way and it was this almost pressure but you know what the crazy thing is is mm -hmm. that like physically you don't look like it you're a redhead like you look very different yeah so it's you. crazy that it which is very unique and very beautiful you know and it's crazy that you know you could still feel the 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 mind game of like needing to fit in a box where yeah. you like you just your nature doesn't fit in any box. Thank you. you know I appreciate that. Yeah. I have a whole other rabbit hole I could go down Let's with that go too down of with wanting it. Yeah. to blend in yeah. and not wanting my pale skin to be shown, all these things. It's it's so funny that you're saying that too. So thank you for that reflection. For sure. For sure. But I think we all tend to feel that, right? Because we want to belong and we want to matter. And yet we do the very opposite of what allows us to really be seen, which is trying to fit in. And I noticed myself doing that. And I'm, I'm so grateful for my past self because I actually, I began my journey just posting on, on Instagram, sharing my story of going from, you know, abusing drugs and alcohol and feeling so much shame for myself and not being on the internet. I, I was completely dark on the internet for three years, not even personal accounts, because I, was, I had so much shame from a past abusive relationship and a lot of fear around that. And so I started to just like, 
I, I basically had this feeling, I had this voice inside of me that was like, this won't be all for nothing. Share your story. Mm. And I pressed post and I claimed it all and I shared exactly what happened. That was my very first post on Instagram. Mm. And I'm so grateful to my past self for basically taking my time slowly. I didn't immediately try to become a coach with just my story of what I learned. I didn't immediately try to like make something or make money or do this. I just wanted to give my story away. Beautiful. And I did that for three years before I ever decided that I was going to take on clients or, and I built my skill set up and I built, um, I built myself from the ground up and the inside out. But during that time was when I'm so grateful that I would kind of take one direction and try something on that I saw from someone else because I think we naturally emulate that. And then I was like, oh, no, that's not me. And I'm grateful that I had the, the wherewithal and the awareness to say, okay, no, I don't want to go in that direction. Let me pause. Let me recalibrate. Okay, let me go over here a little bit. And then I just realized it was me trying to fit in a box. And I, I really made sure that I was sitting with myself and I didn't allow myself to go forward and launch a podcast or launch a brand that was out of alignment, which I think a lot of people do in this space mm -hmm. um, based on what they see works. Mm -hmm. And this was a risk that I was taking with putting fuck in the title of my podcast, right? It was, it was polarizing. And yet when it came to me, I just, I felt so in alignment with it. I knew that no matter what the success of it was going to be, I was going to share my truth. I love that. So a lot just came up that I want to ask you yeah. about, right? Um, the first thing was talk to me because now I want to go into it. And especially for you women out there, I think that this is going to be very helpful. Number one, you said something at the very beginning where your parents wanted you to be a certain way, right? And... um I find that this is more common with, with girls than with boys. It's like boys are able to like, you know, like be free and be rambunctious. And when, and when you think of a boy, you think of a boy playing and, you know, maybe playing with guns, so mm -hmm. forth and so on. But like a, a, a girl, a girl is like really truly expected to like behave and act a certain way, you know, and be very proper, right? And normally that comes from a controlling mother who, who wants the best for her little girl, but in many ways is living vicariously through that little girl, mm. right? And as I sit here, like not only like seeing you, but like feeling your energy, <clears throat> it's so interesting to me that you don't feel like the kind of person that can fit in any box. So my question is, is that something that you became or is that something that you always were that you just remove the barriers from? Mm, I love that question. This is who I always was and who I came here as. And through the good girl programming, starting early on, which I think happens for many women, three, four, five years old, don't be too loud, don't be too much. I had an Afro as a child, like curly hair, red hair, and I'm like, you know, blown in the wind, running around to everyone so you know, outgoing. And I always wanted to, to be on a stage and I was a performer as a child, right? And that got dimmed over time. By who? My parents, definitely. How? You know, it, it's interesting that you say mother because in my experience, it was actually my father. Mm. And I say this, this was so much love. I, it was really both of them in their own ways, right? Sure. Um, but my dad had grown up with nothing and eventually worked his way up. And really, he was someone I wildly respect and look, look up to and created a beautiful life for himself. But he believed that the way he created his success was because he was extremely clean cut and he didn't curse. I, I wasn't allowed to dye my hair, which I get red hair, but I wasn't allowed to wear black. I wasn't allowed to paint my nails any dark color. I was supposed to, I went on business dinners with my father and at the age of eight years old, I'm supposed to sit and be pretty and be proper and speak well. 
And in many ways that aided me. And yet I remember as a child feeling very stifled by that mm. because I had a sense of humor and I was out there and I was just like rambunctious and fun. And that was my magic. You're very expressive. Like as I'm watching, you can't even, your face can't even yeah. sit still. <laughs> <laughs> so if Pretty you're much. listening, you have to, it's just so interesting to me how like, it's so true. And yet like all of it was a gift. Yeah. Because it's what ultimately led you to finding yourself. Exactly. Yeah. So this entire journey has been a remembering and a coming back home to who I always was. And I'm still finding pieces of that and showing up in that way. And, and it was a long journey to get to this point of working through my own shame because there was so much shame that came up in showing my true self. T t talk to me about shame for a second because um, I'm, I'm very aware of sh the energy of shame. I'm very aware of the way that society, religion, our family imprints that shame in our subconscious mind and in our hearts. And what most people don't realize about shame is that we are living with it and we have been living with it since we were little boys and little girls. It's an energy. It's something you don't even realize, and it's affecting your, your health. It's affecting your ability to connect sexually with your partner. It's affecting your ability to dream and think big. It's affecting your income in very, very big ways because all of life on the outside is simply a reflection of what's happening inside of you. And so if you've been shamed your entire life, what has really been happening is you have been taught that you are not worthy, that you are not capable, that you are not powerful enough to see yourself as the beautiful thing that you are, which is 100% abundance, love, and you are the one. You're the one. And there's no one that's going to come save you. There's no one to wait for. There's, there's, there is not even in a partner the one that you need to look for. Like the only place you need to look is inside of yourself. And when you find the one inside of yourself, life just starts to flow and it just starts to become absolute incredible magic where you could think something and it just appears yes. like magic. Because that's how powerful we are as human beings and that's how powerful you are and I am and our listeners are. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. This is one of my favorite topics that triggers a lot of people. It does because it's because you know why? Because I'm going to say this, you know, and I'm going to have to repost the post. But yesterday I, I posted a post that said, you know, uh, I think something like something like the greatest sin there is, is thinking that there's sin. Mm. And so many people get mad at that. Oh, I bet. Because it's like, well, First off, if there's no sin, that that unravels the whole story. Yeah. But then it's like, th the beautiful thing is I sit there thinking like, you're basically arguing that you want this negative energy in your life. And you don't even realize that, which is fair because at one point I didn't either. You know, I didn't either. But share your thoughts. What came up? And and I have compassion for those people too. So do I. Because I, like, yes. You know, that's embedded in our society. And we're trained that that way from an early age just like we're trained sin and shame go hand in hand it, that's exactly that's the what same it is. right yeah. and sprinkle in a little guilt yep and you have religion you yeah there you go <laughs> exactly exactly which is uh which is a part of my story of, of as why as a child i very much was like oh i don't resonate with that and but actually i resonate with the principles and, and the core sure. right which is which is spirituality but going back to shame Shame is something that I realized I lived with deeply as a child for being too much, too loud, not enough, everything in between. And when I went through the traumas that began to happen when I was 16, and it was really about an eight-year stretch of just abusing myself because of shame, and it came out sideways when my father passed because I was so angry at the world and having no framework being atheist and having no belief outside of myself, I had nothing to hold on to that kept me driving. So it was just like, well, F this, right? Like, I, and and I, I actually made the shame so much worse because I did everything that I was told not to do out of a rebellion energy. 
And I swung in the complete opposite direction, which I think a lot of people do. And I think what happens with shame, so many people that feel unworthy deep down inside, it can come out in so many different ways. And it can come out in what happened to me when I was a late teenager, early 20s, which was drug and alcohol abuse. It can come out with people even that build companies that, you know, I need to have the stuff and the thing and the house and the car and the girls or the men, whatever that is. And it's when you look in the mirror at the end of the day, do you like what you see? And what do you feel inside? And I think shame often causes so many people at the end of the day when you're by yourself to feel empty. Yeah. And ultimately what I found on my journey and so much fulfillment in what it is that I do in my community and who I get to serve, it was born out of claiming my shame. Because what I found is that shame hides in the shadows and darkness can't thrive when you bring it to light. That's right, yeah. So I began to see myself in all of it and own it, own the messiness, own the humanness, own the corners of my mind that I didn't want to see or look at. And as I began to reveal it to myself and make peace with it, and that's a journey too. For sure. And I began to claim it and own it. I started to own it online in increments. Yeah. I will say in increments, right? This is all a phase, or all phases. There's yeah. levels to this yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I began to just say, here I am. This is me. This is what I've been through. And it's honest. Take it or leave it. Yeah. I love that. And There's so much power in that. So much power. Yeah. So much power in that. And to my surprise, that actually ended up being the thing that people began to resonate with and be attracted to because it was no longer, I need to look a certain way. I need to wear this mask and I know all the things and learn from me and it was, this is it. So funny you bring that up. I was walking with my friend Tim this morning and, uh, and, and he asked me, he's like, dude, things are like blowing up. And I go, yeah, man, it's cool. And he's like, what do you think it is, you know? And I said, honest to God, I said, I, I dropped the final mask. Mm. And, and that was the, it was the like, you know how you make a video and you happen to sneak in like the Bentley sign on the back of the seat. Like, yeah. Because what you're saying is, please validate me and love me and like me because I own a Bentley. Or you make a video and you happen to pull out just far enough so they could see your big, beautiful window that signifies that you have money. So what you're essentially saying is, please love me, like me, because I have a big house, yeah. right? Or you happen to be able to show your clothing, right? And what you're really saying in all of this is, I am deeply afraid of you ever finding out who it is that I really am without all of this stuff. And I need all of this stuff in order for you to validate, accept, and love me. And it's a massive mass that I've been wearing my entire life. And honestly, what I'm saying, without saying it is, I'm afraid to drop it. Yeah. Because I don't know what life is without it. Absolutely. And that, that was me, by the way. Mm. So that was me, right? So, so when I finally dropped all of that, and I was... Dude, I believe that you can have it all. I believe you can be rich. I believe you can make a million bucks a year or a million bucks a month or a million bucks a week or a million bucks a day. I believe that the universe absolutely does not care how many zeros you attach to your goals. I believe with all my heart that you can attract the dream love of your life. I believe that you could have passionate sex all day long with someone that you're actually attracted to and like being around and crave being around. I believe that you can be in a relationship where you don't have to argue every single day of your entire life. I also believe that if you waste any time of your life in something like that, 
that it's going to come back to you mm. in illness, in stress, in disease. And this is why we as human beings are getting ill because we are in relationships where we are not in love. I believe that there is this thing called source that is the source of all healing and universal love. And that if you finally remove all of the barriers that religion tries to place around your mind and your heart to keep you in the box so that they can control you, then you actually get to discover who God is. And by discovering who God is, you discover who you are. And when you do that, you can heal yourself of absolutely anything. Any barrier with money, any barrier with health, any barrier around love, absolutely anything. And I finally got to a space where I was just okay sharing all of it. Yeah. Because it's the truth. It's it the is. truth that I went deep into my heart to discover. And you know what's interesting is that more and more people are realizing it. Yeah. Wow. That was beautifully put. Could not have said that better myself. Absolutely. Because it, you know what? Because it resonates because it's like, the, the message that I believe you're saying is, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm saying as well is, if you want to live a life of abundance, be honest and truthful to who you are. Yes, and to who you are not. Absolutely, and it's okay. It's okay that you are the way that you are, right? So, like, I'm talking to my buddy Tim, and I'm like, Tim, I gotta be honest. My strength, just put the people in front of me. Ooh. Put the people in front of me. How to put the people in front of me? That's not my strength. That's not my, how to organize where they're going to sit and how it's all going to happen? That's not my strength, right? But that's what re working as a team really is all about, right? Is that when we all work as a team, it's all about finding our individual strengths and loving that about ourselves and going all into that. That thing. Yes. And your ability to lead in that way is a byproduct of you doing the work and knowing yourself. That's right. That's right. And I truly believe that's why It's Fucking Spiritual was successful was because I claimed it. I owned it. I knew my lane. I said, this is what I stand for. This is what I'm not for. This is who I am for. And that's why the community that I ended up building is so about it. Yeah. And they love it and they share it. And it almost became this movement that began to grow itself. I love it. And because it was spoken from the heart. If you're enjoying this episode, I wanted to remind you that this episode is being brought to you by the energy of healing and transformation. And it is your time to act now to transform your life by awakening your highest self. Join us March 23rd, 24th, and 25th in Austin, Texas, live at Awaken Your Highest Self. Tickets are on sale now. Go to dannymorell.com backslash awaken and reserve your seats today. You know what's funny? Like you guys, if you're if you're listening, you have to go watch on YouTube. Like you look like it's fucking spiritual. I love it. Like you you look it. As Thank well. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> on brand always. But, but that's the beautiful thing. Yeah. And then the beautiful thing, the, the the other beautiful thing is that for some people, it's okay. It's not going to resonate exactly because they'll be triggered by the word or whatever, and that's okay. You got to be okay that who you are is not going to be for everybody. Exactly, and I had to make peace with that. Yeah. Because in order to fully be myself, I had to also accept the polarity that comes with everything. It's that saying that you hear all the time, if you're for everybody, you're for nobody. We hear that in our space all the time, but it's actually true mm -hmm. in the sense of like, if you just fully speak and own your truth, that's what creates people that are in the movement with you. Like, I don't feel like it's my podcast. I feel like it's our podcast, my whole fam that's online and that listens and that loves it. And I listen to them and I share just the things that they want to know. And they're creating it with me and they've created it with me from the very beginning. And that's been a really huge part of it. And yet the people that it's not for, it falls away. Yeah. And that's totally okay. I love that. I want to get into another subject that I... I is dear to my heart because uh, most of our audience is actually female. Mm. And I know that when it comes to relationships, right? When it comes to relationships, um, men and women uh, interact with the dynamic of relationship way different, right? Particularly what I wanna know about you is, you know, it is much more common 
for to hear that a woman was in an abusive relationship mm -hmm. than it is for a man, right? That'll probably trigger somebody because yeah. you know when you're looking to be triggered, you're gonna find that word you're gonna people. you're gonna find yeah. something to be triggered about. Um, but my my question for you is this, and one of the things that I believe, know, and teach is that you attract your partner based off of the energy that you are living from. Mm -hmm. And when you attract someone that was, you know, harmful to you in any way, shape or form, you can look at it from one of two ways. Either A, you were a victim of it, or B, you were the creator of it. And that's very difficult for some people to grasp because that, that, that flips the entire script of life on them. Mm -hmm. Because you get to then at that point go, oh my God, I'm the one that drew this in, right? And when you do and you finally get to that space, it actually becomes very beautiful. Yeah. Because you see that you're so powerful that the future version of yourself drew to yourself exactly the person that you needed to feel the pain, to feel the discomfort, to feel the, the heartbreaking that you felt in order to evolve and heal. Yeah. And as I share that, I just, I would love for you to share from a woman's perspective, do, does that resonate as truth to you? Yes, and. Yeah. And I love that you shared that because that is the belief that I hold as well. And I also have a caveat and want to add to that Please too. Do. Yeah. But what I will say now from the vantage point in which I sit, I can see and look back having done this work that I absolutely was the creator of that. We're attracting everything that we feel inside. Everything that we have is an outward manifestation of what's going on within us. And the abusive relationship that I was in for nearly four years, physical, mental, emotional, you name it, it was an outward manifestation of how I was treating myself on the inside. And the hatred, the absolute hatred I had for myself at that point in my life. And the shame and the guilt and the unworthiness. And on some subconscious level, that's what I believed I deserved. And I can say that from this now point. But my caveat to that is that if you're listening to this, if you're a woman that is going through something like this, mm -hmm. I want to be sensitive and have compassion for where any woman is at in the now moment of experiencing or trying to get out of a relationship that is either abusive or, or emotionally, whatever that is, um, it, it mistreating you in, in any way. Because what happens with the psychology of women that are in abusive relationships, they end up, that cycle of unworthiness spirals downward and it gets worse and worse. Mm -hmm. And so oftentimes women end up staying because they're so chipped away at, and that's why it's so hard to leave because it, it takes a piece of you and, and it just, so, and, and I know that, and the reason I'm, I'm choosing my words carefully here. We want to be sensitive. I want to yeah. be sensitive. Exactly. Yeah. Women that are, that are in the cycle of abuse in their in the current stage often saying to them you created this perpetuates the shame because they can't hear beyond where they're at uh i didn't i wasn't aware i, so I see that i see that that's the one piece that i just say have the strength and the power within you to leave to get out to not be in that and then begin your healing journey on your own and as you begin the healing journey and as you begin to heal the parts of you that attracted that to you, you will begin to see. And become aware. And become aware right. on a new level that you created it. But I think the psychology of where women are when they are in it, because that was certainly me and certainly women that I have spoken to, there's levels in which 
how to get them to take those actions and and to support them in that way. I love that. Mm-hmm. I love that. So so and now I want to offer some help, right? So if there's a woman out there that I want to speak I want to speak to two women, mm-hmm. right? Um number one you have the woman that's in it right now, right? That's a that's that's a that's a, a a sad place to be. That's a rough place to be, right? Um what what advice would you offer to that woman? Mm. And and I'm no expert on this specifically, yeah. but yeah. So can I can I share something? Yeah. So if you're listening, have grace. Yes. Have grace because what we say might you know upset. We're 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 genuinely mm-hmm. trying to help. Yeah. So yeah. To the woman that is experiencing any sort of mistreatment in a relationship at this moment. I'm gonna feel into my heart and just speak directly to you. Whatever it is that got you to this place is not your fault. Whatever happened to you is not your fault, but you do have the strength within you to take responsibility to change it, to get out, to walk away, to leave, to do the necessary things, lean into the discomfort and lean into the fear that you feel. And I know you blame yourself, but you deserve better and you will find better. And I ask that you trust in a greater future than what you can see in this moment. I love that. Thank you for that spoken from the heart of somebody that actually experienced it yeah when we experience things like this um and 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 for those of you that are out there and i and i could feel i could literally see women's tears right now Mm. so i know this is going to move some people what i also want to share with all of you is that this version of her that you see right now this powerful force of of energy and light and joy and decisiveness that you that you feel it's a mirror and a representation of who you also are as well you know um and so wherever you are right now understand that if you if you decide you don't have to know how you don't have to know how cuz we as human beings get caught up in the how. All you have to do is close your eyes and go into your heart. And maybe you might want to do that right now. You close your eyes and you go into your heart and you say, God, I don't know how, but I want to find my highest self. I, I want to find my true power. And I'm not in a place where I could even know what the first step is. I'm not in a space where I even have the energy or the courage to take the first step. So I'm going to ask you to please take it for me. Make it evidently clear. And once I see it, I will follow your path. And you watch. Mm. And you watch what happens. Yeah. 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 Oh, I love that. And to add to that, it's we can have so much strength within ourselves, but when we can lean on a higher power, source, God, universe, yeah, yeah. whatever you want to call it, yeah. your future self, the highest version of you, when you can just do exactly what Danny said and tap in, just close your eyes for a moment, find a moment of quiet and tap into the strength and the source and the power that you have within you and you can generate that energy and cultivate that and then take action from that place. You don't have to sustain it all the time, but allow yourself to take it. That's what inspired yeah. action is. Yeah, yeah. And I, I love that. And those are the moments, guys, those are the moments that change your life. When you have the courage to just quiet your mind, tap into your heart, and say that that prayer, that that conversation, that request, and then don't be attached to when or how. Just let it flow and let it happen, you know? And I I give you my word. Like, I promise you, just watch. And all you have to do is be sincere 
and 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 watch what takes place, you know? To the second woman. Mm -hmm. The second woman is out. Okay. She found her way out and she's scared. She's scared because I get these messages, I see them all the time. It's hundreds of them. She's scared because she doesn't know how to provide for herself. Mm -hmm. Maybe she has a child or two to take care of. Uh, maybe she um, has never needed to provide for herself and now she does. What would you say to that woman? Mm. I'm going to tap in again. And my heart just first, a woman in that specific situation, my heart just goes out to any women, women that are that are in that situation. I was lucky to not have children in leaving, and I know that that complicates things. So I also want to be sensitive to that too, that I haven't walked that specific path. And what I know about strength and faith and courage, what I would say to that woman is the courage that it took to leave a relationship that was not good to you, took all of the strength that you had, and I know it did. And use that courage and that strength and that faith that you took in that moment and channel it into a brighter future. And you can come back to that over and over and over again as many times as you need until you believe it. Close your eyes, say the prayer, mm -hmm. cultivate the power, and practice it. Because when you're transforming your life in any way, whether that's leaving an abusive relationship, whether that's leaving a toxic corporate job that I've had the experience of, whether that's uh, just simply creating something better for your future, shifting your state, shifting your mindset, like that those things take practice and cultivation over and over and over again. And especially at the beginning, they do not feel natural. But if you ever had a moment that you had that courage and you acted, then you know that it's within you. That's right. And everybody has. That's right. So go back to that moment and tap into that strength again and then do it again and again. And the more you practice it, the easier it will become and the more you will believe in it yourself. Yeah. yeah. And I, I just got a message that I, I feel led to share. You know, for those women that have children and they see how wonderful and magnificent their children are and they're filled with joy and possibility and courage and happiness and spontaneity and they're just filled with life, I want to remind you that you gave birth to that child. So that means that the energy that you see in that child and everything that you see that you love about that child, it's not separate from you. you it literally came from you. So it's in there. It's in there. And I say this because so many women look at their children as like, wow, it's like, you know, like I get to live life now like I get to see it through them because maybe for me it didn't happen. No, no, don't don't buy into that. Don't believe that. Like, like if you want to if you want to talk about a lie from the pit of hell, that's a lie right there. Yeah. Right. Instead, look at that child and say, "Oh my gosh, like that came from me. That means that that's inside of me. Mm -hmm. That means that I am that too." And slowly start to harness that. Slowly start to become that what mm -hmm. you see. You know. Yeah. Oh, I love that message. And to add to that even, looking at life through the eyes of your child, also remember the child that you were. That's right. The raw, authentic, real, loving, joyful, full of life child that you once were before life taught you that that was too much to be. Yeah or whatever your story is that life life imposed upon you. 
And that energy still exists. Energy can't be created or destroyed. It can only transform. And if you feel that life has done what life has done to you up until this point, remember the child that you once were and know that you can transform in any way. You can tap into that energy at any time because that energy exists within you. Mm -hmm. And even I do this at my home. I have pictures of me as a child up in different places to remember to honor that little girl yeah. and honor her messiness and honor her talent and honor her dreams and desires and goals. And so that's the place that I'm creating from. That's the place that I'm living from. And it's made all the difference. I love that. I love that. Final thoughts. You know, I'd love for you to speak directly to to women who may feel inspired right now, you know, to women who, um, gosh, men as well. But I, I really just feel for like this is like this. This one was directed to women, you know. So, fellas, don't worry. I'll get you on another episode. <laughs> but, um, but to the women who who um who feel inspired right now, who feel like wow, you know, they definitely feel your your vibe, your energy, your your power, and um and and they want some of that too. How do they harness that mm. or discover it within themselves? Yeah. Number one, start where your feet are. Stop looking outside of yourself. Stop comparing yourself to everyone else because as we've discussed in this episode, so many people are doing things layered on top of shame and look at me or whatever. And I think that so many women that I speak to not only go through so much stuff in their lives, but also compare themselves, add it onto the era of social media and all these things. And I want to say, start exactly where your feet are. You are meant to be exactly where you are in this moment. And you have so much strength and courage and power and love within you that deserves to be given to the world. Mm. And something that I've been marinating on and that is my new North Star that I just want to give away is rather than thinking that you have to look a certain way or act a certain way or be a certain way in order to be successful or to find the partner or, or whatever that is, have your goal or have your, your compass be pointed at instead creating a life that feels just as good as it looks. Mm. And that's been my North Star now as I, and that's the place I make decisions from, whether that's in my company, whether that's in dating life, what, whatever that may be. So does this feel good to me? Does this feel expansive to me? Does this honor me? Yeah. And when you come from that place, you can't go wrong. That's right. I love that. How do people find you, get a hold of you? Absolutely. I am on Instagram at Rachel Gibbler, just my first and last name. We also How do you, how do you spell Gibbler? Gibbler, G-I-B-L-E-R. Got it. Yes. And uh, my podcast, It's Fucking Spiritual. So Instagram, TikTok, my website, rachelgibbler.com. And of course, come listen to the podcast and um, it's so much fun and we shoot the shit and awesome. Awesome. <laughs> talk about spiritual things and I get really real and honest. So if you want more of that vibe, then come hang out. I love it. I love it. Thanks for being here. Thank you Super so much here. for having me, Danny. And uh, guys, just a friendly reminder, it's fucking spiritual. It, it, it truly is. I love that. I love that. I hope that you uh, found a lot of value from this one, especially for, for you beautiful ladies out there who... Who have struggled um, in being put in a box, are in the journey of getting out of that box, and also for you ladies who have struggled in in some some tough relationships, right? Um, I promise you that there's a gift, you know, eventually in all of it, and maybe the gift is as simple as coming out of it and being able to share and help other women like like Rachel did today. So um, that's it for this week, and we'll see you on next week's episode of the Higher Self. Thanks for watching or listening. If this week's episode resonated with you deeply and you're ready to discover more about yourself, 
go to dannymorell.com and check out some of our upcoming events and our resources. Or if you'd like to learn more about our coaching programs, simply shoot us a message on Instagram and one of our team members will reach out to you immediately.